making a lot of progress on our siding. We've still got a ways to go, but we are, we are gaining ground. Uh, we're getting close to top of the window here. See our rain screen details. Still, we're keeping them up consistently. Bug screen, so intake, exhaust, gonna keep the critters out. And we're getting going on the soffit. This is soffit from New Wall. As you can see, it's a PVC uh, extruded product. And one thing I always like to think about when we're doing this, when we're installing any product actually, is how is it gonna be affected by water? How is it gonna be affected by a freeze thaw cycle? And as you can see, we have had a, uh, a random uh, second winter event happen. Uh, you know, fall spring continues. So brought me back to this point. We chose to install new wall this way so that we're always going up into the channel. And having the channel pointed down allows for drainage. Any water that gets up in there, short of the little bit that's gonna be held in tension, is gonna drain out hopefully before it freezes. Either way, just a simple installation choice is gonna reduce your risk. If I installed it up, we're always gonna have more water. I won't say substantial amount of water, but you would have more water sitting in that U than you would down this way. Grab it as your friend, use it when you can. How we figured out the angle to cut these U trims without an angle finder over top of that roof. So essentially these extruded channels, they have to go out, wrap down the fascia, come back down the underside of the rake. And this is how we figured out the angles without using an angle finder. So we know because we've built the place that that roof is a 512. So just gonna draw it out just so it makes sense. So essentially everything is triangle. Imagine this would be your fascia. We know if that's plumb cut is correct, that that is a 90 degree angle. And we know that a 512 roof is roughly 22.5. It's actually 22.6, but for easy math, we're gonna round up. So we know that all triangles are 180 degrees. So this has to be 67.5, but that's not the angle you bisect because your trim piece actually comes up the outside. So you're actually making this angle here. That means that you need the 100 less, less 180 degrees. So 180 degrees, that line right there, minus 67.5, uh, that works out to be 112, excuse me, 112.5. We're gonna bisect, or not bisect, you divide that in two, and that gives you 56.25 on each side to make that angle. And then we just cut it. Very fortunate this saw goes over 56, but it only slides one way. So you have to think about which way your angle is. I'm using this piece of two x four as a sacrificial support. There we go, when that goes up, it'll be the right angle for the roof. I just gotta cut its matching side. I've got both sides of this angle cut, and as you can see, we are right there for the, uh, excuse me, we are right there for the back side of our U-trim. Are you required to use a rain screen on your projects? Locally, we have to use at least a 3 8 air gap. And I should probably explain that there's different types of rain screens out there. There's a rain screen that provides drainage only, so it's a very narrow gap, but it allows for water to drain. And then we have ventilated rain screens. Similar to the one you see here, I have my cladding, 
And then between the back side of my cladding and my WRB, there's an airspace. And there's multiple different ways to create that airspace, but that airspace provides you with ventilation. And the minimum airspace that will allow for truly a ventilated rain screen is 3 8 which is what you see here. But I could quite easily go on to use 3 quarter inch material, uh, an entangled mesh product like um, Benjamin Obdike's uh, house home slicker. Or we could possibly use a pressure equalized rain screen. Uh, pressure equalized rain screens are kind of a topic onto the a topic unto themselves and there's actually very few rain screens out there that are truly pressure equalized and basically what they mean by a pressure equalized rain screen is out here whatever the air pressure is we would have the identical air pressure inside so there would never be an opportunity for water to be forced into the structure um, in theory it sounds great and there are some very successful pressure equalized rain screens out there, but you're not probably going to find them on a residential project. And uh, again, there's very few true pressure equalized rain screens. This is relatively easy to create. A ventilated rain screen, basically you have a way for air to come in. Now we're over top of a window here, you can see the flashing. But if you're able to get in up here, you can actually see the core vent, and that allows airflow in at the bottom. It can travel up in this channel, and it will be vented out up top. That allows for any minuscule amount of water that does get by the cladding. Uh, and if you think that your siding is waterproof, you're, you're fooling yourself. Siding is not waterproof. Uh, it is the first plane of protection, and it definitely takes care of the bulk water if it's installed properly but water does get behind siding so any water that does make it back here is not going to be held in tension because it's got this great great gap that it can drain and fall out gravity is a wonderful thing but the airflow will take care of those little droplets of water uh, anything that is trapped you know against the side of the lath any of those little things, it'll allow it to dry out completely. And that protects your structure. Uh, wood loves to be dry. Wood lasts forever if it's dry. So if we can ensure that our WRB stays dry, we're, protect we're protecting our structure for the long haul. Uh, we'll go up and we'll have a look at the top. see the gap so any air flowing up here passes through the bug screen ventilates out the top just a great way to get rid of any moisture that might be trapped against this wall even condensation or uh, you know dew from those cold mornings on the the dark side of the house and we are on the north side of the house right now um, you know, give your building a chance to succeed. And this is a really cheap way to give your building a chance to succeed. We don't have to use 3 8 We could have used 3 quarter inch strapping, which is uh, technically probably cheaper uh, and readily available in our market. But, you know, design constraints are always a factor. And if I had my way, uh, especially in this environment, we would be going with a 3 quarter inch rain screen. But again, 3 8 meets code, and it is the minimum for a ventilated rain screen. So it's going to work well, uh, but if I had my way, we would go 3 quarter.